This past year, with the UK being in lockdown, there's been a much larger focus on wildlife. Documentaries like Sea Spiracy and David Attenborough's Life on Our Planet have been brought more attention to conservation globally than what's been done locally. To find out more about local efforts, I spoke to members of birdwatching committees to find out what they do and how they've been affected by the pandemic. Hi, I'm Phil Espin. I'm the chairman of the Lincolnshire Bird Club, which covers the historic county of Lincolnshire. Yeah, hi. So my name is uh, Graham Sorry. Uh, I'm a committee member of the Northumberland and Tyneside Bird Club. Um, I'm George Green. Currently, I am acting chairman of the Dorset Bird Club. So what is Birdwatch? It's, it's quite a big question that um, you'll find that there's a whole range within the, it's like the hobby of bird watching or the interest, there's a whole range of people and you get the ones that sometimes get on the news for sort of what they call the twitchers who will uh, uh, drop the hat or travel great distances to see a rare bird in Britain. Some people just have a local patch and that's all they do, they just look for the birds on their patch. Some people do photography. Some people go out hunting for rare birds, finding rare birds, and other people go chasing after around the country to see other people's rare birds. And there's ringers and um, and down to a level of people might just just like looking at their garden birds. You've got a whole spectrum of people, and I've done all of it. <laughs> what do bird watching clubs actually do? The bird club. Its principal activity is to produce an annual bird report. So it encourages members to get out around and about around the county and record birds as much as possible. Uh, an, an indoor meeting programme. So from September through to April, we have a, a monthly indoor meeting uh, where we have a guest speaker talking about some aspect of uh, ornithology, uh, ranging from uh, club members who've been on holiday, who've been talk about their bird trips, uh, to um, wardens of uh, various nature reserves, uh, all the way through to people talking uh, quite esoterically about individual species. Birdwatching is incredibly popular in the UK with an estimated 3 million adults taking part each year and it's only increasing in popularity over the lockdown. I think people who were used to travelling further to their birdwatching got used to doing uh, sort of local birding. I mean, last April, um, well, I live in Wimbledon and I was lucky um, I could walk uh, down to the River Stour and walk down the Stour through the fields towards the centre of Wimbledon, which is quite good. I did a lot more birding for my garden, which I hadn't done you know, ever before. I um, saw some quite interesting birds like red kites. I have an osprey fly in my garden. It's an interesting species. I learned more about the birds in my garden in a month than I did in the previous five years. I think it is true actually that we have added um, a few uh, more members than perhaps we might usually have done uh, during lockdown. And I think that that's potentially um, partly because people have been um, more aware of their surroundings and, and you know, with, um, you know, with access to the countryside uh, and birds in particular, um, people have sort of reconnected a little bit with their local nature. Um, and that, that, that I think has prompted one or two people to maybe join um, the bird club who perhaps might not have um, in the past. So the interest in birding in the UK really is there, even during the lockdown. But with the overall decrease in bird population, tracking and conservation in each area is imperative to the survival of most birds in the UK. More than 40 million birds have disappeared from the UK's skies since 1970, according to the RSPB. Some of the nation's favourite birds like the corn bunting, the turtle dove and the bullfinch are rapidly disappearing from view. What's become obvious is that, and it's a really good book by a, a guy called Benedict MacDonald called Rebirding that makes this point, is that the reason our bird populations are declining is because we're starving them to death because the countryside does not provide the weed seeds or the insects for birds to be able to successfully raise young. There's just not enough food there because the farming is too efficient. And so space, hopefully, space will be taken out of intensive agriculture and given over to birds and they have a good chance to re-establish. Encourage and help farmers rewild their land or parts of their land to the benefit of wildlife and ultimately to the benefit of dealing with climate change and all the other big issues we've got to look at. The Martin Down Farm Cluster is an example of one way that we can work with farmers to better help the bird population. Working with farmers in the local area, the cluster has helped submit over 4,200 species reports, helping to monitor endangered species in the area. 
because they centered it around a big national lake preserve, which Martin Down is. And it's a bit like a spider's web. So you get all the farmers who are adjacent to that to rebuild their land a bit. And so the birds that are sort of captured, if you like, or on the National Lake Reserve have somewhere else to go so they can expand, the populations can expand. And the classic species is the turtle dove, which is a bird which is heading for extinction in this country um, rapidly. And um, they've almost doubled the population there because there's a remnant population left on Martin Down has managed to go into the better hedgerows, the farmland nearby. And of course, it sort of like goes on because once you've done that, you can have another farm cluster around that and you end up sort of doing larger and larger areas. So there is a future for conservation in the UK. But we know that massive step is getting people involved in bird watching groups. After the lockdown, what does the future hold for bird watching in the UK? Um, and that's a question that we wrestle with uh, as a committee uh, ourselves. Um, because um, well, our primary function is is to you know is to further the conservation of of, of birds, bird recording, um, you know, education of people with birds. Um, but I, like many things, we've, we're finding that our our age distribution within the membership is is gradually keeping is gradually going up, and that we're not really getting you know younger people. Uh, you know, joining the club and, and, and participating. There are a few exceptions, and some of the younger guys are exceptional bird watchers. So there's, it's not like there's no talent or anything. There's plenty of talent, but there's just not very many of them. And that's a question that we wrestle with ourselves: is what, what for for the for the membership fee? What are we providing? And you know, and in a world where uh, you know there's bird guides, there's rare bird alerts, there's Twitter, there's WhatsApp groups. You know. What is the what is the draw of people to be a member of the bird club? In the days when you, you know, people could go off to see a rare bird somewhere, and the other people there were white, male, and of a certain age, and there were a few women, and there were uh, not a lot of ethnic minorities there, and so we had a good look at whether we were. Um, and the right word right now, but whether we were sort of how we could attract a wider range of society into um, the bird club. There are so many organisations looking to help aid wildlife in the UK nationwide. I've seen from talking to George, Phil and Graham that there are still people looking to make that difference. If you're interested in joining a bird watching group, check the BTO website to find a local.